every day. We're telling ourselves a story about the world and our relation to it. If that story is a good one that inspires hope and confidence, then we'll be able to find peace in that moment. If it's a bad one, it can make life a living hell. When I heard the theme this year was going to be the world inside your head, I thought, well, I can talk about that. <laughs> and it's, it's not because I've written a book on it or done any groundbreaking research. All right, I'll be honest, I just walked in 10 minutes ago and said my name's Ted, and I heard there was a Ted talk. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to make that joke at least once. <laughs> No, it's because I had first-hand experience with living with a very unpleasant world in my own head. If you've read my bio, you'll see I left Duke for a few years because of that. Now, during that time I was away, I was taught a better way to approach my inner narrative, and by extension, a better way to approach the world. I'm going to share a bit of my story with all of you today because I hope some of you might identify a little bit and begin to question your own inner narrative. I hope they'll all see that it can change. So I grew up in a difficult home environment where I didn't have a lot of peace, and as a result, I developed a pretty anxious, negative personality. When I got to Duke, I had a major chip on my shoulder, and I had something to prove to the world. Now, on the one hand, I did have a good amount of potential and drive, but on the other, I was so full of negativity and distorted perceptions of the world that I just didn't really feel comfortable in my own skin. So what did I do? I got out of myself, I partied, I drank, I played video games, I did whatever it took. Now, I wasn't a terrible student, but you can only last a day so long like that, and eventually I ran into trouble. No matter where I looked, I couldn't seem to find a department of DJing and fraternity party studies to get my degree in. <laughs> so, unless I could get my act together and do something else, I wasn't going to last for much longer at this school. I've always had a pretty dark sense of humor, so I posted this beauty as my Facebook profile picture. And a little while later, I was gone. <laughs> now, it really wasn't that funny at the time, because I mean, that's how I felt. My best wasn't good enough for Duke University. I wish I could say that things got better after that, but they didn't. They got worse first. And they got worse because I still thought that the problem was outside of me. I thought that all I needed to do was just get a high-paying job, make a lot of money, and become a professional music producer, and then everything would be great. There was only one problem with that. I'd often gotten exactly what I wanted in life, and it didn't do it for me. I can't tell you how many opportunities I've earned through during my time at Duke. Eventually, it was too much. Getting up in the morning felt like, oh God, here comes another 24 hours. I had to take a look in the mirror and recognize the fact that I had no freaking idea what I was doing or what I was going to do with my life. So I swallowed my pride and I looked for help outside of myself. I cut out the drinking, the partying, all that crap, and most of all I became willing to listen to someone other than myself. It was around that time that I met a straight talk and tell it like it is counselor, and somehow I didn't really like him. He didn't particularly like me, but we ended up in this like movie duo mutual hate relationship. <laughs> um, we're good friends now. <laughs> but, but at the time, he told me some things that I didn't want to hear, but they were very true. And one of them today serves as one of the foundations of the way I approach the world. That is this. My experience of life isn't entirely determined by my situation. It's affected by my situation but also by my perceptions and my reactions. Now, of those three, only one of them, the situation, is actually outside of me. The other two, my perceptions, my reactions, those are internal, and they are closely related with the story that I tell myself. Growing up where I did, it was entirely reasonable for me to point the finger outside of myself and say, that's why I'm not happy. The problem was I wasn't in that environment anymore, and yet I was still affected by toxic, corrosive thinking. It became clear that that was going to have to change. So what did we do? Together we looked over all the events in my life that I still felt a certain way about. We tried to disregard the external portion and look only at the story I was telling myself about each one. We found that in virtually every case, there was something in my own narrative or my own perception that was perpetuating the things I didn't like. It's not that everything was my fault, 
I just never learned a healthy way to frame and approach life experiences. I realized the truth was clear. My perception of the world was going to have to change if I wanted to get my act together. That process took a while, and it's not something I can cover in a 10 minute TED talk. But the first step of it was becoming aware of the stories that have been guiding my life and running my life without my ever even knowing it. I listened to what he said, kicking and screaming sometimes, but I listened, and I started to notice myself changing. I started to feel comfortable again, and my narrative began to change. But eventually, I was able to return to Duke a year ago and succeed this time, due entirely to what I learned. But I'm not here today to talk about how I'm doing. I'm here because I want to encourage all of us to take an honest look at the stories we tell ourselves about the world and ask ourselves if they're working for us or not. For me, these stories often take the form of elaborate scenarios or situations I play out in my head, either in the future, or in the past, or what have you. But I find I can usually boil them down to a simple statement of belief or theme underlying them. Here's some of mine that I think a lot of us will identify with. If I don't make enough money, I'm not going to be happy. I can't believe someone said that. I've got to stop them. Or here's one. I need to find my passion, or I won't be satisfied with life. Let's look at one of these. I need to find my passion in life. This was something I was worried about when I came back to campus, because I didn't have a whole lot of time left, and I couldn't mess around anymore. At the same time, I was very afraid that I was going to end up in a job I didn't like, working for people I couldn't stand, working hours I couldn't handle. Here's how I look at this today. Rather than looking at, okay, I need to find something outside of me that will give me this thing called passion, I say, what if I can just be passionate with whatever I'm doing? What if that's a quality inside of me? What if, rather than looking for what I can extract from the world or a job, I look for where I can offer the most, and in the process, I can find meaning and purpose in anything I'm doing? So today, this story for me, the theme is more, I can be passionate, then I can be satisfied with life. When I frame it like this, I'm less at the mercy of my life situation. For me, a negative story, I can usually reduce it down to some variation of, if I don't get what I want, then I'm not going to be okay. Now, changing a narrative over time allows us to say, okay, maybe I won't get what I want, but maybe I'll still be okay. And then eventually, maybe what I want doesn't even matter that much. Maybe I will just be okay. This doesn't mean that everything always goes my way. This isn't about denial or always naively searching for a silver lining on everything. That's magical thinking. That's not what I'm talking about. This is about positioning myself so that I'm able to act on life rather than having life act on me. Regardless of the situation I find myself in, I find that I can frame my story in such a way that I'm able to act. If I can't act, I can grow. And at the least, I can serve something bigger than myself. And when I do that, I find that I tap into an inner power and I'm less able to be victimized by circumstances outside of my control. This isn't something that can be done overnight. Some of you have probably noticed that what I'm talking about sounds a lot like cognitive behavior therapy or mindfulness. You're right. If any of you do want to change your inner narrative in the long run, then the way to do that is through a formal meditative, spiritual, or therapeutic program. For all of us, though, the first step to changing anything is to become aware of it. And we can become aware of the stories that are guiding our lives today. I'm going to leave you today with some techniques I've learned over the years that can help with building that awareness and putting a little space between you and a negative story. I'd like to challenge us all. Next time you find yourself feeling anxious, angry, afraid, when you're able to, let's all take a step back. Let's try to dispassionately observe some of the, some of the thoughts going through our heads. And then, ask yourself, what story am I telling myself right now? Even if all we have is a feeling, try to put it to words, and then try to see if maybe there's another way to see it that respects reality, 
but positions us to act or to grow. When we do that, if it fits with your beliefs, it can also be useful to say a personal mantra or prayer to solidify your intention to seeing it that way. Then, try talking it over with someone you trust. I find that sharing a negative story with someone I'm close to further weakens its power over me. And then lastly, get out. I find that if I stay stuck in something, all the insight in the world doesn't matter. So take whatever action is needed for the situation, and then go do something for someone else if you're able to. That doesn't have to be anything big. It can just be calling your friend or calling your mom and seeing how they're doing. The point is not to stay stuck in a negative story. Now, none of this is magic. Changing your perspective like this, it's not going to happen overnight. What it will do, though, is it will put a little bit of space between you and a negative story you've been telling yourself. And even that little bit of space and a little bit of awareness you've created will make your overall story just that much better. So please, I'd like to ask all of us here, let's make our stories good ones. Thank you.